In this screencast, we will take a look at lead lag systems with a particular focus on first order lead lag systems. So what is presented on the screen here is the standard form of the transfer function for a first order lead lag system. Let's first take a look at why this transfer function gets its name. Let's first start with the denominator. The denominator represents, as the subscript indicates, this represents the lag portion. And to understand this, think about when we develop regular first order transfer functions of the form, let's say, k over tau s plus 1. So when we draw the response to a step function, we see something that looks like this, this being time and this being the variable y. So what we notice is a few things. One is the fact that the system does not immediately respond to a step change of some magnitude. It takes some time. Also remember the fact that after one tau, the system reaches 62.3% of its maximum, or at five tau, the system reaches about 99% of its maximum. So therefore, what it's saying is the fact that the higher tau is, the slower the response. So in other words, the dynamics of the denominator, that tau value, act as a means to slow down the response, which is indicated by the fact of its presence in the denominator. So therefore, if you were to see a term with respect to s in the numerator, you would expect the opposite, the fact that its presence would be there to speed up the dynamics, which is the case. Hence, y is referred to as a lead unit. From a sense of a chemical process, seeing a first order lead lag system isn't terribly common. However, lead lag systems are crucially important when developing control systems, most notably lead lag compensators and developing appropriate transfer functions for feed forward controllers. So therefore, there is an importance from a chemi standpoint, even though it might not be exactly seen in the mathematical model. Speaking of the mathematical model, looking at this equation, what type of differential equation would we need in order to get a first order lead lag response? If we think about it for a second, the denominator term always comes from the dynamics with respect to the y value. So therefore, if this would be something on the order of tau lag dy dt plus y. But since we have this tau lead s plus 1 in the denominator, what that is indicative of is actually the fact that the input variable, in our case here x, also has some derivative relationship with respect to time. In that tau s plus 1 form, we have a similar functional form here on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. With k, the steady state gain, the same steady state gain that for any first order transfer function or most other transfer functions that we've seen before, providing that ratio between a change in output to the change in input. So this is our differential equation, which allows us to get the above transfer function. So what we'll now do is take a look at how a lead lag process responds to a step input change. So in order to do that, we would have y, the step increase in the Laplace domain, or decrease, would be represented by m over s, and then we would just bring back our transfer function. We move the m over s over, and we end up with from here, we can break this down into its specific roots, so s and tau lag s plus 1, and we can use partial fractions to solve for a and b. So we now have our equation. So if we take the inverse Laplace transforms, the inverse Laplace transform of km over s will just be km. And the inverse Laplace transform of the second term will be the coefficient multiplied by 1 over tau lag multiplied by e to the negative t over tau lag. Also, if we look at our output variable y, the inverse Laplace transform is just the variable in the time domain. So this will be our final answer. After doing some simplification and rearrangement, we can restate this as y of t equals km multiplied by 1 minus 1 minus tau lead over tau lag multiplied by the exponential. What does this actually look like? So we see the fact that we have some decaying exponential behavior here. To give us the idea of what our curve will have some look like, the fact will be something that will decay to a steady state in either a positive or, or a negative manner. So in order to analyze this, we'll take a look at our initial and final conditions. So y of 0 would be km multiplied by 1 minus, 1 minus tau lead over tau lag 
multiplied by this exponential. Well, the exponential of 0 is going to be 1. So therefore, the inside of, of the brackets will become 1 minus 1. Minus 1 becomes a plus tau lead over tau lag. The 1's cancel, and that shows the fact that our initial value will be km multiplied by the ratio of tau lead over tau lag. So an interesting point to note about this type of function is the fact that its initial value is in fact not zero. Now we will evaluate the system as y approaches infinity to figure out where we'll end up. So we do the same thing, except we substitute in infinity for time. And what that will mean is the fact that the exponential goes to zero, meaning that this whole second term will go to zero. That means the fact that this system will converge in the end to km. What we'll now do is begin to graph this function, but what we'll do for our y-axis is we'll graph the normalized value of y, which is divided by km. Our x-axis will still remain time. So an important point to note here is the fact that since we've normalized it by km, the system will start at the ratio, if we go back looking up here, it will start at the ratio of tau lead over tau lag, whatever that may be and they will all converge to km. So since we have normalized by km, that means that here the, system, the systems will all converge to one. There are three possibilities that exist. The first possibilities are for cases where tau lead is greater than tau lag, and what that means is the fact that our initial condition will be at some value greater than one, but will then will decay in some exponential-like fashion towards the steady state value of one. So these are the cases when tau lead is greater than tau lag. When tau lead equals tau lag, what you'll notice in this equation is the fact that this term here will go to zero. So in other words, the process will equal one. And what that means is the fact that the lead and the lag both in some ways cancel each other out. Remember the fact that the lead is quickening the process up while the lag is slowing it down. So when they're equal, basically both the quickening actions and the slowing actions are canceling out. Finally, for cases where tau lead is less than tau lag, which can also include tau lead being a negative number, you see the opposite of what we saw where it was greater than tau lag. The system will start below one and work itself towards the steady state value of one. And these two here show when values are negative, but it also can very well be the fact that the lag values can also be greater than the lead values in both being positive numbers. This screencast shows the nuts and bolts associated with understanding lead lag processes, why they exist, and why they're important in chemical engineering processes.